Yep. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Raymond Martinez. I'm from the Republic of the South Once. I'm the environmental director there of the Department of Environmental and Cultural Preservation. I just stepped into the role in uh, 2013, but I've been um, I've been employed in the environmental department for the past 13 years. So, um, just wanted to, uh, to come and give a brief update, or actually a program overview. I was asked by Irene if we could uh, if I could give a a uh, department uh, overview of what we have going on at the Pueblo and just the different things that we're doing there. So I'll get right into it, be real brief. I'm not going to get into too much detail on some of the programs that we have going on. We, we have a, an, an array of things going on right now at the Pueblo, so I'll just I'll go right in, get right into it. And if you have any questions, then please feel free. So first couple slides are just some history of the Pueblo, um, what we have going on. So I'm going to skip. Come. So here, what we have is a, a map that actually shows our Pueblo boundaries, the Los Alamos boundary, and our ancestral boundary. How what you can see here is the majority of the lab, most of the lab sits within our ancestral brown, boundary, and that's why you know the Pueblo has been very involved in the environmental issues that go on there at the lab and how they affect um, us uh, downstream. So our environmental department, we started in 96 um, with, uh, we started so, um, signing the Los Alamos Pueblo project, uh, which is the four accord Pueblos, and we're part of that accord. Was, we started our program first, director was hired in 96, we developed our mission statement. A little bit of history of what's been going on here um, with our LAP program and what other funding agencies that we have. We um, currently are, funded through LAP uh, to EPA uh, 106 water quality, uh, the gap assistance. And uh, we used to have uh, air quality, but uh, no longer uh, uh, carry that program due to funding. We are also, we do receive funds for the NRDA process that um, we're involved in also, and all, also the um, WHIP, in which we have, uh, the route runs through, bisects the majority of the Pueblo, and then um, out down into Carlsbad. Some more, a little bit of history. From this, we, um, beginning of, of, of our work here, we developed our one and five year plans, which we update every year. Um, a lot of this work that's been going on, the basis of it is the development of our tribal risk assessment, which we developed back in 2003 um, is when we started working on it. And from that, we've been updating it. Um, and. Uh, really getting all of our programs involved and tailored to a tribal risk assessment which fits into our one and five year plans and uh, pretty much overall the mission statement of our program. So right now we have eight employees um, and from that uh, a lot of our staff wear multiple hats. They're in, they're, they, they're in charge of, of, of quite a few different things as far as um, you know, day-to-day -day activities. Some of our administration things that go on. I'm just gonna go real quick right through these and get into some of this. Some of our, um, our natural resource damage assessments, which we've been involved in, I've been um, a part of this with, uh, with, with Mike Gardepi for the past um, uh, three, three years. Uh, my, my, my previous uh, director, Neil Weber, was, was, was heavily involved in this, so I'm just, uh, trying to keep up with all the new stuff that's been coming on. And like Mike said, we did, they did issue that, um, that uh, came out just recently. So hopefully we'll start moving on that and see what happens from there. Like I said, here's some of our funding sources again. Administrative, um, so some of the things that we do administrate, I mean, like I said, we, we're, we're a small program. So a lot of my staff juggle in between a lot of their day-to-day -day activities on top of um, administering all our grant issues and what, what we have going on. We try and get our um, DCEP quarterly newsletters out for our community, we keep them as much involved with all the issues that are coming on, um, onto the Pueblo, with the Pueblo, with, 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 with um, all the different entities that we deal with. So we try and keep our community very involved. We send out our newsletters as, as often as we can. And we also try and hold um, community outreach events and um, get the community involved. Uh, we also offer internships for some of our students that, um, that want to take an interest in the environmental field. 
We have um, written two Gate Millennium Scholarships or helped with, with, with two Gate Millennium Scholarships from uh, students from the Pueblo, which they did receive and gone on for a continued education and, uh, and they were interns at, there in, in our department. So some of the cultural resources, as you can see as the Parito Plateau, as you guys all know, it's, it's, it's totally, you know, there's a lot of cultural significance up there for the Pueblo, along as with all the um, uh, cultural items that are in the area. So we're heavily involved with activities that go on with the lab as far as construction, um, any kind of new programs that happen. Our team, our cultural resource advisor, is, is, is involved in all those issues and, and spends a lot of time up at the lab when they're, when they're doing a, quite a bit of their work. Just a couple of, you know, some, some responsibilities from what happens in his program. Okay, here's the basis of what we're looking at right now. This is a traditional risk assessment that you know that you guys are all aware of and what we did is we took this and we developed it into the Pueblo specific tribal risk assessment which includes hunting, pottery making, farming, outdoors um, and then also just um, you know everyday work that we have to do as far as our our people going out there um, cutting wood, harvesting um, animals, any anything like that as far as you know our, our even our traditional and cultural aspects that we have we have a quality assurance um, program and we see a lot of data coming in we have a lot of data coming in from Lano, NMED, ourselves and um, our quality assurance he, he, he looks at all these as, as, as long as and also all our documents that we have that are uh, that we have to um, abide by for all the grants that, that uh, we have going on right now. So he, he sits and looks at a lot of these and builds up our library for these. So there's some more document reviews. You can see some of the stuff that he has to look at. All these documents that we have to deal with here and a lot of the stuff also that we not only from the environmental side, but we help out the, the, the Pueblo administration and the governor himself when he comes and asks us to look at different documents as far as, you know, what they're being involved in, what, what kind of uh, perspective we can give and where we can help out. So a lot of things come from the uh, governor's administration for us to also jump into and look at and see where we can um, assist. From this, all this um, data that we had going on, we developed our DCEP database. Um, we had a lot of data that was stored just in our, um, you know, our computers, hard copy, things like that. We didn't know what to do with. So um, we developed our DCEP database, which includes LANL data, NMED data, and data from, um, that we collect on the Pueblo ourselves, DCEP data. So the next slide shows how much we have now. Uh, we haven't updated it this year yet, so I know there's there's quite a few quite a few um, updates that we need to add to our database that's going to be coming in here pretty soon. And I know I'm not doing our DCEP database justice right now. I'm going through it real quick. So um, we have a separate presentation that just deals with our tribal risk assessment and our DCEP database that we give. Um, that, that we also can provide some, you know, maybe sometime in the future. But this, I'm just giving just a brief overview of, 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 of what all our programs that we have. But we have uh, specific um, presentations that just deal with our database and our tribal risk assessment itself. So we also incorporate our GIS um, program, GIS, our GPS program that, that we have going on. And we work, um, we work, uh, uh, real close with the lab and all the data layers that they have as far as um, as far as developing maps and things like that getting points especially on the cultural resource side um, you know we don't get to always get into the lab to see a lot of these cultural sites so we have to rely on them on where these places are and how we can pinpoint them on a map that we can be able to see and discuss and be able to uh, provide input as far as you know if there's things going on as far as construction or um, earth removal and things like that, that, you know, we may be able to step in and give some perspective on the Pueblo side. 
there's some other maps that we produce. And again, we also, from the governor's side, um, the administration may come down and ask us to provide a lot of these uh, maps for them too. So we can pull these data layers up. What we have is we actually um, developed a map catalog. So we have that floating around that the administration, anybody can come in from the administration, look through what they want as far as their maps. Let us know what they want to pull out. We'll pull those layers out and we'll make that map from. And our water quality program, what we do is we um, look at uh, groundwater. We have a lot of springs um, throughout the Pueblo. So we don't necessarily deal with drinking water. We just handle groundwater. So a few other things that our water quality program actually, like I said, wears uh, multiple hats. So our program actually helps with the, with the UST program that we have going on at the Pueblo also, and also with the solid waste. We, we, we help with the facilities department as far as putting out um, documents so they can meet their deliverables also. So we assist in different areas with the administration. Environmental sampling, um, we pretty much piggy banked off of the lab on how they set up their system and we incorporated it and made it our own. Air quality, we have um, two air net stations, one set up on our sacred areas across adjacent from, um, from TA-54 at Area G. Um, so we monitor that. We also have one in the Pueblo itself. And all this data is coming into us and we see it and we put it into our database. It's just a few pictures of what we have here. We actually, like I said, community outreach, that picture there on the far right, that was for what we call Santiago Day. Um, with our WHIP coordinator, we actually had them come down and bring the truck so the community members would be able to see them and know what's actually traveling through the Pueblo. Because, you know, we get a lot of questions, people calling and saying, hey, are they safe? Are they, what happens if they um, go off the bridge and fall in the river or something like that? You know, a lot of things happen. So what we did is we actually brought these down. And um, I don't remember the gentleman at, at, the, at the time, but he, he, he gave a presentation on it, on, you know, on what they're made of, what they contain, and things like that. So it was good to have them there. I mean, of course, a lot of people are concerned about, hey, did they get lost? They showed up at the Pueblo. Why are they parked by a church? You know, so. Um, but, you know, it was just a learning experience for the community to be able to see that. And, of course, you know, um, the TA-54 from the domes were still up. We had concerns of that because they're adjacent from our sacred area, and we do a lot of hunting in that area. And we were concerned about, um, you know, safety of, of not only our tribal members, but safety of the lab employees, you know, because they are using high-powered rifles. What if something, you know, happens to stray across the canyon and things like that? You know, there's employees there. There's the domes there. There's the, 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 the drums also there. You know, we're, we're real concerned because in some areas, I mean, it's, it's, it's 100 yards across, 200 yards across. It's, it's, it's not far at all. So a lot of our, so what we also do is community outreach. Like I said, we offer internships when we do have availability and uh, funds to be able to do that. But we hold a, a summer um, environmental program in conjunction with our after school and uh, youth programs that we have going on at the Pueblo. So we get all our programs involved and they each take a day and they sit down with the kids and um, talk about what they do. As far as you know, GIS, GPS, uh, we take them out to the pond, show them how we do water sampling, air sampling, things like that. So we're, we're, we're really involved in our community and we like to help out as, as much as we can as far as community outreach and also education-wise. Just uh, some of the other things that we're looking at also. I mean, we're always looking at evolving. I mean, like I said, I've been involved in the program for 13 years, and um, I actually uh, started as a tribal risk assessment manager. And uh, from there, you know, we've gone um, keep, keep building. So that's one thing that we always want to do is, is have our employees with professional development. And in conclusion, I'm sorry I, I ran through this kind of, kind of, kind of quick. Um, like I said, you know, if, if, if anybody has any questions, I can get into more detail on, uh, on, the, on the programs we have.
but um, I wanted to also leave time for the governor. I know he's next on the agenda and um, wanted him to be able to speak and have time to, to address some of the things that you guys may be able to uh, want to ask or things like that. So.